Hi everyone, uh, this is Phil Travis, and um, here we are, EOU, History 445, Post-War Europe. Uh, it's week eight. <clears throat> this week, um, I'm going to try to keep this announcement kind of short for you. This week, um, our only graded assignment is our discussion board. Remember, for full credit on the discussion board, make sure you uh, either post a reply uh, no later than Thursday. Make sure you have at least one post, two replies over two separate days starting no later than Thursday. Also, don't forget, I'll give you a factoid at the end of this announcement, um, and you can email me that factoid no later than by Wednesday at midnight, and I will, I will add a, an additional point to one of your test scores at the end of the term if you haven't already been doing the extra credit. Um, this week we're reading from Jute, chapter 17, 18, and 19, and um, it's a pretty significant chunk of reading, but we're, pro we're primarily going to focus in on two big developments. One, politically speaking, in Great Britain, the period of Margaret Thatcher's um, uh, uh, prime, uh, role as Prime Minister in Great Britain. So we're going to look at Thatcherism. What is Thatcherism? Um, what were the ramifications of Margaret Thatcher's career as Prime Minister in Great Britain? What were the long-term ramifications for British politics for the next 20 years after Margaret Thatcher um, you know, left her post as Prime Minister. And then we're also going to look at the dissolution of the Soviet Union, which is a primary topic of this week's presentation. Uh, my, uh, my video lecture this week is on the dissolution of the Soviet Union. So we're going to look at Mikhail Gorbachev, and we're going to look at his efforts at reform in the Soviet Union, and why those reform efforts, you know, don't actually work, at least in the way he intended. Uh, of course, the reform efforts of Gorbachev it leads to the utter collapse of the Soviet Union, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now and let you uh, get more information from my video lecture this week and also the reading. But we see under the, under the leadership of Mikhail Gorbachev, we see some real robust efforts at reforming the Soviet Union, but um, that despite his intentions to be a reformer, um, Gorbachev's reforms uh, lead to the complete dissolution of the Soviet Empire. So we're going to be looking primarily at um, Thatcherism, Margaret Thatcher's prime minister uh, period as prime minister in Great Britain, and uh, Gorbachev's reform and the dissolution of the Soviet Union as a result of Gorbachev's reform efforts. Um, no quiz or anything this week. I want you to be working on the paper. We have a research paper coming due in a couple of weeks, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to you know, have a little lighter week, uh, like we did last week, um, graded discussion forum, some reading, um, and the hope is that you'll also be working on those papers and getting those papers uh, together so that, um, you know, so that, you know, when it comes time, we're not doing anything at the last second and we're turning in, you know, papers we're really, you know, confident in um, and happy with. Okay. The factoid for this week is this. Um, during Gorbachev's period as a Soviet, um, as Soviet premier, um, of course, the world experienced one of the worst nuclear um, disasters. And this, of course, was the meltdown at Chernobyl. Um, Chernobyl was a nuclear facility located in Belarus. And uh, um, what happened ultimately... Um, um, uh, Chernobyl, unlike the Fukushima case, where Fukushima was a meltdown and the core kind of melted down through the containment the containment structure of the Fukushima uh, of one of the actually I think two of the Fukushima reactors uh, in Japan after the, the tsunami several years ago. Um, in Chernobyl, they were doing a test, and in the test, they had um, a failure um, of. Um, of the cooling system, and to make a long story short, it resulted in the containment, the the, the reactor containment vessel exploding, and the Chernobyl um, the Chernobyl um, uh, uh, catastrophe, nuclear catastrophe, it was a graphite rod uh, reactor. So there's all these graphite rods that were down in the reactor that were covered up by water and. And uh, when it exploded, it threw all these particulates of graphite, highly radioactive graphite, into the air. And then, of course, you had the burning, uh, the burning, uh, 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 melting uh, nuclear material that was then throwing um, all of this, these radioactive pollutants into the air. And uh, this catastrophe, Chernobyl, uh, in 1986, uh, you know, 
caused huge radioactive pollutants all across uh, northern and eastern and central Europe. And in, in many places, there are still health effects and issues with um, you know, certain farming products uh, in certain parts of the, of the region affected still to this day. It, effect, it didn't affect uh, Russia nearly as much as it affected um, you know, central and uh, northeastern Europe because of the, the, the picture of the wind, I mean, the direction of the wind currents, which carried all of these, this radioactive graphite, which then dropped out um, onto places like uh, Scandinavia, for example, in Finland. Um, in other countries, Belarus, of course, um, you know, uh, Poland, uh, we're all very, very affected by this. And, and these areas, many of these areas that were most affected still to this day have, um, have um, populations that have some of the telltale signs of, of radioactive, you know, um, pollution, birth defects, certain types of cancers and so forth. Well, anyway, here's the factoid. Here's the factoid. So right next to Chernobyl, there was a city built, and it was built largely because of, it was a, it was a city built right alongside Chernobyl, and it was where many of the workers would have lived. And the name of the city was Pripyat. And this is the factoid. Pripyat, um, this city uh, right next to Chernobyl, Pripyat was evacuated during this disaster, and it's today, it's a ghost city. Um, and uh, no one has ever been able to return. Um, it is a place that remains uh, a hazardous radioactive zone, and it is a um, basically a, uh, a ghost city that um, signifies the ramifications of a very, very massive nuclear catastrophe and the potential dangers of, of, of what can happen in the event of a nuclear crisis going wrong. Uh, of course, the United States had the Three Mile Island crisis slightly less than a decade before, um, and that did not turn into be a meltdown or anything like that. But had Three Mile Island turned into a catastrophic meltdown, uh, maybe Harrisonburg, uh, or Harrisburg, I'm sorry, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, maybe today that's a ghost town like Pripyat. And so Pripyat today is a ghost town, and it's a, it's a ghost city. Uh, many of the things are left there just as they were when people left in 1986 when they were evacuated. And it sort of symbolizes what can, go, what can really happen when a nuclear crisis goes, goes wrong and an area becomes um, uh, polluted um, with radioactive poison um, for the long term. Uh, it will take a long, long time before this area is a place where people can safely live again. So that's the fact. I guess this, this announcement is actually not that... Uh, short. Uh, I, I, I tried. I, I guess I, I, I have a lot to say. You guys are probably used to that now. Anyway, let's have a great week and let me know if you have any questions. Work on those research papers. It's a fun discussion. Uh, we've been doing really good in this class, so let's keep it up.